Okay, a bookshelf tour. Where to start? I guess with the kids section. Aesop's Fables, things like Goodnight Moon, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, then my Louisa May Alcott. I don't actually have Little Women, but I have Under the Lilacs, Eight Cousins and Rose and Bloom. My Paddington books, classics like Peter Pan and The Wizard of Oz, Ozma of Oz. Then my Frances Hodgson Burnett, A Little Princess and The Secret Garden. You have to read those. A bunch of Beverly Cleary, which I read a lot of when I was a kid. The Bells of Finland Street, because I'm Finnish. Then three classics about Katie by Susan Coolidge. They were published like a hundred years ago, but I really, really enjoyed them. My Rewald Doll, Harriet the Spy, The Wind in the Willows, which is actually kind of an overrated classic. Then a bunch of Marguerite Henry books, classics about horses. Then behind all of those kids' books are the rest of the kids' books. A Canadian classic, that's Scatterbrain Bookie by uh, Beatrice Thurman Hunter. The Ordinary Princess by M.M.K. I loved, loved, loved that book as a kid. You have to read that one. Then all my Nancy Drew um, from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler, my Pippi Longstocking books, Hello Mrs. Pigglewiggle, Winnie the Pooh books, then The Borrowers, Island of the Blue Dolphins, which is also really, really good, The Littles, which is kind of like The Borrowers, but not quite as good, The Little Prince, Miss Bianca by Marjorie Sharp, Encyclopedia Brown, which is where I got my love for mysteries, Black Beauty and Heidi, Mary Poppins books, Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm, then all my Laura Ingalls Wilder books, and uh, E.B. White books like Charlotte's Web, The Trumpet of the Swan, and Stuart Little. Then my language shelf, which includes dictionaries, lexicons, a thesaurus, books about French, books in French, dictionaries for other languages, Italian, Spanish, German, Greek, Chinese, a non-fiction shelf with books about fashion, architecture, decorating, fine arts, then all sorts of things, graphology, baby names, dancing, and some business textbooks. The poetry shelf, which has Shakespeare, haiku, Byron, different poetry books, also books about how to write, my What Jane Austen Ate and Charles Dickens Knew, etiquette books, mathematics books, and my waterfall books because I love going and visiting waterfalls. Another non-fiction shelf with compendiums like the New York Times Practical Guide to Practically Everything, then books about geography, science, I really need to get more science books, mental note, books about migraines, because I get a lot of those, which is really annoying. Oh, and some more children's books that didn't fit on my original shelf, like Dr. Seuss and Beatrix Potter. My history shelf with Canadian history, American history, and just a touch of Russian history and English history. Then gardening books. Then we have my music bookshelf with all my music books. I have a whole bunch of the books in this series, uh, Willard Palmer Masterworks editions, which are really, really good editions of classic songs. But of course, that's only really interesting if you're a musician. Then some more popular music things and soundtracks to musicals like Phantom of the Opera. Then books about all different kind of other instruments besides the piano like drums and voice. Then we have all my theory and music history books which I needed for different music courses. And then at the very bottom are all the ones, all the books that I used in my piano lessons when I was taking piano lessons and now that I'm giving piano lessons, most of them from the Royal Conservatory of Music in Canada and they don't want to go back in because there are so many of those ones. Then to end off the non-fiction section, I have more non-fiction books than most bookshelf tours that I've seen. Uh, these are all my cookbooks. They go back there into the cupboard. You can't see all of the titles. I used to actually have twice as many cookbooks 
When I was doing spring cleaning, I just got rid of a whole bunch where I tried the recipes and I probably wasn't going to try anything more from them, and I was in a purging kind of mood. Now to the fiction books. This drawer has all my Patricia Wentworth, which are um, romantic suspense books, and also I think almost every one of the Rumpel of the Bailey books except one by John Mortimer. This drawer has all of my Rex Stout Nero Wolf mysteries and a couple of Marjorie Allingham mysteries. I don't have every single one of these mysteries. There are like three or four that I am still looking for. This drawer has all of my Dorothy Sayers Lord Peter Wimsey mysteries, including a sequel that somebody wrote. It also has all of my P.G. Woodhouse books in order of their publication because I'm like that. In this drawer, it's full of Lucy Maud Montgomery books. There and there. Also in this section are some newer things like the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, uh, Cordelia Underwood by Van Reed, Molly Peer also by Van Reed, The Mistaken Wife by Rose Mellican, The Case of the Missing Books by Ian Sansom, and Paper Towns by John Green. I think there's one more underneath, but it's not going to come out. Ah yes, 13 Little Blue Envelopes by Maureen Johnson. And the top drawer has all of my paperback Georgette Hare books, which is, she's practically my favorite author ever. And this side are um, all historical romance. This side has the ones that are mysteries, and still some historical romance ones. Starting here, we have miscellaneous fiction in, generally speaking, alphabetical order. So, uh, Douglas Adams, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, Austin, The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie by Alan Bradley, a really good mystery. All of My Bronte, Wuthering Heights, Jane Eyre, The Professor, Shirley, and Viette. Francis Brooks, The History of Emily Montague, which is one of the first or earliest novels written in North America. Pearl S. Buck's The Good Earth, and Lydia Cassatt Reading the Morning Paper by Harriet Scott Chessman, a short gem of a book. Then here, Sarah's Key. Um, my Dickens, I only have three of them, even though I've read all the rest. My Sherlock Holmes Compendium, that one actually took me quite a long time to read because it's pretty thick. The Sherlock Holmes Handbook by Ransom Rakes, whose name you might recognize if you're a nerd fighter. Uh, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Ella Minnow P by Mark Dunn, which is a really, really clever book. Edna Ferber's Showboat. This shelf has some books that I haven't really classified yet, because they're ones that I've gotten more recently. Little Women and Me by Lauren Barrett's Logstead. It was alright. The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. And over here, A Gentleman of Fortune, a mystery by Anna Dean and Jane, a modern retelling of Jane Eyre by April Lindner. Then, um, alphabetically, all my Jasper Ford books. Helen Forrester's Tuppence to Cross the Mercy, which is a um, depression memoir. Then all of my John Galsworthy Foresight Saga books. Over here, everything I have by Elizabeth Gaskell, who was kind of a contemporary of the Brontes. Uh, the Glass Palace by Marianne Gibbs, which is kind of, kind of something like Jane Austen. The Princess Bride by William Goldman. A book that I really, really love, Rasselas by Samuel Johnson. It's mentioned in Jane Eyre as being the book that Helen Burns reads, and I found this beautiful old copy and I just love it. Boswell's Life of Samuel Johnson, one of my few abridged books because the original is just so long. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux, and The Last Days of Pompeii by Edward Bulwer-Lytton, which is a really old novel and one that I really wanted to read because I like the story of Pompeii. Down here, you probably can't see it, I have Thomas More's Utopia. Sorry that the lighting is so bad in this section of the room. Then other things, classics like Animal Farm, Moby Dick, Jenna Starborn, which is a sci-fi version of Jane Eyre. Then two romantic suspense books by Mary Stewart, Nine Coaches Waiting and The Ivy Tree. The Ivy Tree is also kind of a retelling of Jane Eyre. I just love Jane Eyre. 
The Magnificent Ambersons by Booth Tarkington, which has been made into two really good movies. I recommend those. And some Josephine Tay mysteries. She's kind of a la Agatha Christie. Then historical novels by Ellsworth Thane. Uh, she's not so well known, but I really enjoy these. They cover history starting from revolutionary America in the 1700s up to uh, World War II. Jules Verne, Around the World in 80 Days, and two biographies, Anne Frank and Helen Keller. Then behind my A to F fiction books are my hardcover, or mostly hardcover, Georgette Hare books. Then behind my F to L fiction books I have all my Anthony Trollope books. Some people don't really care for Anthony Trollope. I really like him. Uh, first all the Barchester Tower ones. Sorry, <laughs> I need a flashlight to see all the titles. It's dark back in there. He Knew He Was Right, The, Amer the Way We Live Now, Lady Anna, The Belton Estate, Ayla's Angel, The American Senator, and all of the Palliser ones. Then behind the M to Z fiction section are some Emily Brightwell mysteries, some Agatha Christie mysteries, and uh, the complete collection of Niall Marsh's mysteries. And lastly, just kept in a box in my closet because there is no more room for them in my bookshelves anymore, are all of my Doctor Who books, because I am crazy about Doctor Who. Sorry if this tour seemed too short, and sorry if it seemed too long.